Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Podcast, sitting here in a remote location, uh, sort of inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, the trophy room, and joining me, speaking of trophies, Jeremy Birmingham. Welcome once again to the Tim May Podcast. Thanks, Tim. I've been called worse than a trophy. <laughs> you're, a, you're a trophy catch. Uh, that's what I've heard from your good old days, man. But uh, but we won't get into that. That would be a digression with, that we might not be able yeah, to get out of we without, don't digress without tire change. Right? Yeah, there's no digressing here. Hey, boy, man, when we're recording this, uh, National, National Secondary Signing Day is uh, only hours away. Uh, but it has changed so much. You plan to sleep in. Did you plan to sleep in on this Wednesday? Uh, no, I mean, I was definitely not planning on getting up at 630 like I used to have to do on yeah. signing day. Um, Ohio State's efforts are pretty much wrapped up. There's only one player that's kind of in limbo right now, and that's forced our defensive lineman, Christian Miller from Georgia. As we um, record this. But, yeah. you know, we're going to probably have an answer to that before Wednesday morning. So I, I probably won't have to sleep in for that either uh, or get up too early for that. But, you know, it's different. I mean, the early signing period has changed things in a way that I, I don't personally like. I used to love uh, signing day. It was like Christmas for me. Yeah. Um, but now you just sort of, it's just another day, you know, which I guess the coaches here probably really like um, because that drama is not good for anyone's blood pressure come February in the old days. But uh, it did set up some fun moments, you know, like Von Bell choosing Ohio State uh, on signing day when Urban Meyer and his staff had no idea he was going to. And, yeah. you know, those sort of things that you don't really get anymore, not only just because of the signing day periods changing, but also just simply because the internet recruiting world is so different and so much knowledge is out there about everyone all the time that you, some of the intrigue is just gone, but it's all right. It, it's good for the people here. I can tell you that. Yeah. You know, I, and that sets up well, my conversation with Jeremy Crabtree, you know, one of the recruiting gurus now for on three.com and, uh, you know, you're part of that whole, <laughs> yeah. whole phalanx of people that uh, go places and see people and uh, keep up with things. And, uh, you know, we talked about that, about how the, 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 the uh, climate has changed so dramatically and, and in many ways, good ways for, for athletes and stuff who can keep up with what's going on just by yeah. watching their Twitter and stuff. I mean, as opposed to just taking a coach's word for this or a, uh, a scout's word for that, they – they kind of know what's going on even about them, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, find the scuttle, out, but. they find out things in, in different ways, and, and they, they are learning about coaches and what a coach says to them. And, hey, did he say the same thing to you? Did this happen? You know, what did this coach say about their depth chart? Yeah. How many guys are they telling you they're taking? I mean, it, it's interesting to watch the, the balance of power shift over the last five or six years from the coaches to the players. And, and you know, we see that in the player empowerment era of just college football, name, image, and likeness, transfer portal, all that. But it starts in, in high school. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the, this recruiting stuff has changed to the point where, especially for those top 100, top 200 type prospects in the country, those kids know they have the, the power. They know they have the leverage over these coaches in most instances. And so you see a whole different dynamic in these. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more after we get back from my, my uh, talk with Jeremy Crabtree. I've known this guy for a long time. You know, I mean, he's friends with uh, acquaintances, whatever you want to call it, with Austin Ward, you know, and around down the line, this guy's been around and he, he was working at television for a while in Kansas City after sort of the recruiting thing fell, fell, fell kind of fell apart. And uh, now he's back into it with on three and really enjoys that part of the, of the situation. I'm not gonna say I totally enjoyed covering recruiting back in the good old days, but it was much less hectic than it is for you guys now where you're competing, not just to get a guy on the phone, but to be the first guy to get the guy on the phone before the other 30 people call him, right? Well, because the kids get sick and tired oh, yeah. at being asked the same question over and over by 30 people. And especially, I mean, for us at, with Letterman Row covering Ohio State, I mean, it's one of the largest beats in the country. There are seven or eight different very good recruiting outlets that cover them. And so, you know, we're trying to build individual relationships with kids all around the country. And they've got their guys in their area that they're regional guys. And, oh, I talked to this guy. I don't need to talk to you. And yeah, it becomes a very difficult um, battle uh, to try to really establish that rapport and build those relationships. But ultimately, like any other business, the, the people that are doing it for the right reason and, and are, that are doing it with the right approach, as opposed to trying to use kids for information, I mean, which is sort of a lot of times what it is, but yeah, um, it's all about how you do it. And uh, Jeremy, I know from getting to watch him over the years, I know he always did it the right way. And he's why I'm glad he's one of the, the national recruiting guys for him. 
Well, let's get to my conversation with Jeremy Crabtree and we'll be back. We'll, we'll chop up a few more things uh, on this uh, National Signing Week, uh, which used to be such a big deal. All Jeremy now. all the time. Yeah, exactly. Here's Jeremy Crabtree. As promised, ladies and gentlemen, man, I've always loved this guy. Uh, I think we're friends, aren't we, Jeremy Crabtree? Yeah, we are. We yeah, are. We go back we a are. long way, man. We go back when uh, when you did uh, recruiting coverage by teletype, right? Am I right yes. about that? Yeah, new newsletters and magazines and 900 lines. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of phone calls. Of course, the phone calls continue, phone calls and uh, direct messages, but uh, uh, text messages. But I wanted to ask you, man, uh, uh, before we get into this deep, what is the big, what is the biggest change you've seen in just the coverage of recruiting during your time yeah. covering it? I mean, I remember, I, I keep telling this famous story. I used to get Tom Lemming. Tom Lemming used to give me his top 100 for the nation. He would dictate it to me over the phone back in the 1980s. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, this was before the internet, uh, yeah. so to speak. But uh, what what in your mind has just, just changed dr dramatically that just it's just kind of even stunning to you? Well, I'm an old newspaper guy, much like you. Yeah. I remember the days uh, back when you could find out some recruiting scoop and put it, you know, send it to your editors and <laughs> yeah. it would be broken the next day in the newspaper. Uh, yes. So I, I, I still remember those days uh, in, 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 in before we had uh, message boards and social media and things like that, that uh, you could break recruiting scoop the next morning. You could hold on to stuff uh, and, and it, uh, and it would be scooped the next day. But yeah. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that is something that obviously has changed. And then the whole, you know, the, the whole advent of everybody covering, uh, covering recruiting. And uh, I, I've always kind of prided myself on, I'm a professionally trained journalist. I went to journalism school. I know how, I think I know how to throw some words together and make things sound good. But uh, there are so many people out there that are covering recruiting that are uh, fall into that uh, fandom uh, category that has been, yeah. Troubling at some times, but then also outstanding at some times because you get some great recruiting coverage from it. So I, I just think it's it's all changed. I mean, there, there is nothing the same as what we used to see back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s. And uh, I, I absolutely love it. I love the fast pace of it. I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I was out of it for four years and covering uh, hard news at a TV station in Kansas City. And uh, I, I would... I, I almost died because I had to cover politics and, 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 and COVID and murders and, and things, things like that. And uh, get, get me back to the good old days where we're covering recruiting and, and, and doing it in this new world that we're in. Yeah, I was going to say there's fewer dead bodies covering recruiting. Fewer is yeah. a, a key term. Just, just a few. Just <laughs> yeah. a few. <laughs> hey, real quick, I want to ask you this too, though. Uh, has, has the just the onslaught of, like you said, just pop up sites that become – fairly major players in this now, you know, by one by hook or crook. I mean, mm -hmm. in one way though, has it made it easier for like the athletes to understand what's going on? You know what I mean? I mean, whether mm -hmm. they're being uh, BS, et cetera. I mean, what, 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 what is, I guess, what has been the plus side do you think for the athlete involved? Well, the plus side is the social media now that gives the kids the platform to break their own. I mean, that that's the biggest thing is that yeah. they can, kind of controlled their message and previously we were in the world where uh, wait let me interrupt you yeah that's what tom brady thought now go ahead <laughs> <laughs> go ahead yeah you know, we'll see if those guys are right in the end they're here yeah but, exactly uh, it's not over until uh, it's over yeah yeah exactly but i, I think the, the the new world that we're in it gives the kids the the opportunity to control their message and, uh, and make their announcements on through their own way or uh, trust, build trust with certain people that they can build a bond with them and they can share their news with them. But uh, uh, it, it, there, were, there are some times that we, we even ran into this, you know, in, in this uh, uh, recruiting class here coming up with Devin Brown, where there were some uh, miss people that uh, allegedly misquoted him and uh, uh, he used his social media platform to call them out. So I think this, it has created a lot more transparency, I think is where I'm going at with this whole thing is that uh, we're in a world with, there's more transparency. You have to uh, 
uh, maybe be even better at, at your craft than you ever were before because there are so many people covering it. Yeah, you know, Shannon Terry had this big idea about having starting on three, you know what I mean? Couldn't keep, couldn't stay out of it, you know, <laughs> couldn't stay out of business. But I mean, when he goes around and hires a guy like you, for example, Ivan Mazel, but, mm. but like for you example, man, to me, the credibility, you know, just instantly goes way up and stuff. And, uh, and I want to credit all you guys for the, for the work you do and stuff. And of course, Jeremy Birmingham on our end at, uh, yeah. at LettermanRoad.com, man, he's in, He's indefat- indefatigable, as I like to say. I like to use that word, even though I'm probably mispronouncing uh, it. But he and uh, Zach Carpenter and yeah. Spencer Holbrook, they just stay on it, to- yeah. on it constantly. Because like you just said, it went from a uh, eight-hour shift at a newspaper to a 24-7, 365 yeah. endeavor, right? I mean, it's crazy how it has changed your life, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's kind of, I do enjoy it. I, I enjoy that part of the process. I I, I enjoy the never ending news cycle. Granted, there are some times, a great example of, uh, I've got a daughter that is, she's a junior and she is being recruited uh, to play college soccer. So wow. we were on a, on a visit this past weekend uh, uh, on Saturday afternoon in Canton, Missouri. We're, we're on the other, we're, we're right on the Mississippi river uh, over at, at, at the college campus. And my phone is blowing up. I'm doing, I'm doing uh, work on my telephone while she's out there doing soccer, a uh, soccer trial at, at, uh, with, at an ID camp. So yes, yeah. it's a, it's a never ending process. You have to have a passion for, for this. It's, it will eat you up if you don't put the time into it, but also there it's, it's a different cycle. I mean, you, you, there are times where you can step away a little bit here in this, this signing period, the signing day that we got coming up here uh, on, on, on Wednesday, to be honest, there's less than 15% of the, players left on the board and that's what makes those 15 percent of guys even more newsworthy but it's unlike any other signing day that, that we traditionally you know as, as old timers uh we we don't we're not used to having only 20 guys to really care about on on signing day it's just the new world that we're in but uh, uh the, this is it, it's fun it's it's hard but it's also very rewarding because you get to build relationships with uh, the stars of tomorrow and you, you meet great people like you and and berm and austin ward all those great folks at uh, across the board and you be you're, you get to be part of something much bigger than just yourself yeah absolutely i, I agree with that 100 percent uh speaking of devin brown a lot of people have been wondering how he suddenly became the number one prospect in the class of 20, 2022 in the uh, on three rankings, explain to people how that works. I, I explained that one of the things was, you know, folks had another chance to look at him at the all America yeah. for all America game workouts in San Antonio, for example, yeah. and stuff, but uh, explain to people how that works and that you're not just coddling to the uh, vast <laughs> Buckeye nation, which, you know, is one of those major, <laughs> yeah. major factors uh, in, 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 in basically, uh, uh, watching recruiting, but also sending money to people uh, to yeah. keep up with recruiting for them. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're right. That was uh, a, t- a tough, tough call. And fortunately, I personally don't have to make that call. That's made by Charles Power, our, our, our tremendous uh, national recruiting direct scouting and rankings director, and, and Jerry Hamilton, our, another, our other national analyst. But there is evidence out there. It, 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 this, doesn't, this, this wasn't something where we said, Oh yeah, let, let's let's pander to the Ohio State fans. This is something where we had a great opportunity to see Devin Brown for a lengthy amount of time. Yeah, every single day during the All American practices, All American Bowl practices, then in the game, get to see how he interacted with uh, picking up a new scheme, new coaches, working with new receivers. But then also take a step back further than that. We also got an opportunity to watch him in the state playoffs where he led. At Corner Canyon to the state championship, where he was outstanding, not unquestionably outstanding uh, in that game. So there is there is evidence. I mean, you you follow yes. the path, and I, I like that there. You know, Charles and Jerry and uh, us folks on three, we're, we're going to make some we're going to make some risky calls that might maybe blow up in our face long term, but uh, maybe most of them likely will pay off long term uh, down the road because. Uh, there, there, there's just enough evidence there with, with him. He checks all those boxes. He's got the gunslinger's mentality. Yes. He's he uh, walks onto the field and he believes that uh, he is the best player, regardless uh, if there are 
15 other five-star quarterbacks like what we saw down at the All-America Bowl. He believes that he is the best of the best. And you got to have that confidence and that swagger. And then he's got the arm strength. He, check, he just checks all of the boxes. But, no, this, this wasn't something where we just said, you know what, he's going to Ohio State. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to throw him up there. No, this, this, this was – something that our team and, and, and did a lot, a lot of research on. And, and it's, it's definitely different than the industry. And that's why we, but we laid it out there for everybody and, and explain why we made that decision. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, uh, by the way, that corner Canyon uh, state championship game was like the bills chiefs, you know, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, was. that went down to the last guy on the field. Uh, uh, don't, the don't, don't bring up the chiefs right here in Kansas City. I know, man, I'm sorry about that, my man, but you know, uh, I've known Joe Burrow since he was 17, you yeah. know, and his dad yeah. and I have kept in touch. And I've had his dad on my podcast many times, especially during that run to the Heisman Trophy way back when. And, uh, boy, that that's a great story yeah. that continues yeah. to add new chapters. But I want to tell you about Devin Brown. I had him on my podcast uh, uh, the week he signed with Ohio State in December. And uh, what, what impressed me about him was, uh, for example, I asked him about the name, image, and likeness thing. And he goes, his main mm-hmm. focus. He's yeah. going into Ohio State is to compete yeah. for the starting yeah. quarterback job, you know, and uh, it's even though obviously C.J. Stroud is back for at least one more season. And at that point, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember because uh, guys, you know, fell off, obviously got into the transfer portal. But uh, the Ohio State quarterback room is, was filled with th- four and five stars. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, mm-hmm. you know, still is for the most part. But uh, but what I wanted to get to you, what I wanted to ask you about, though, is uh, how much does it on the recruiting trail, does it matter when a, for example, now a guy with established credentials, Ryan Day, is focused on a particular quarterback? How much does that get y'all's attention from the standpoint of, well, all right, now, you know, we consider ourselves pretty good experts, but here's a guy that, boy, you look at his record of quarterbacks breaking records at Ohio State since he showed up. It's nuts, you know, and yeah. uh, how much does that kind of weigh into things a little bit when when you know on Ohio State or in Alabama or a Clemson, et cetera, or on the trail of a kid? Mm-hmm. No, you, you throw in Lincoln Riley, especially yeah. you know, previously what he did at Oklahoma and then now what he's hoping to do at, at USC. You're, you're right. You, you have to look at that as, as, as part of a factor because – Grant, there are people that are better at this than, than, than other folks. I mean, there, there are people that are great at identifying certain positions. Uh, there, you look at it, even NFL draft. I mean, you, you, you yeah. see certain professional teams are great at identifying uh, people, and there's others that aren't. And that's why there's teams that go to the Super Bowl and teams that aren't. And there are teams that uh, win college football playoffs. And uh, that don't, don't win college football playoffs. So there are. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, was that a shot at the Cleveland Browns? No, I'm just joking, man. Go ahead. Now. <laughs> we, we, we we take a lot of shots at the Browns in Kansas City. So. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. Uh, but, but target practice. You, no, you're 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 right. Though there are, oper- you uh, you do see uh, from a, from a recruiting coverage standpoint, you do see certain schools that are great at evaluating certain positions and. Uh, you you do have to take that into consideration, and it's yeah. it's a factor. It's not the factor, but uh, uh, you, you as far as you know, you talk about checking all the. I talked earlier about checking all the boxes, but uh, certainly you you look at things like that and you see that uh, yes, a Devin Brown is uh, has everything else that, that that you want the arm strength, the talent, the moxie. But then you know what? Yeah, Ohio State does have a great track record, but then so did uh, the other schools that were recruiting him. So you could identify, yeah. I mean, Steve, you know, Steve Sarkeesian went all in on him at, at, at one point before winning uh, Quinn Ewers over. So, yeah, yeah, you, you see those, those, those signs and those are tangible evidence that, uh, you know, your, your, your rankings are on the right track. Is the Quinn Ewers situation or the Quinn Ewers story, is it the first sign of the apocalypse for uh, college football? I mean, the combination of a big time recruit leaving high school early uh, going to Ohio State, changing yeah. his mind, going to Texas, uh, having an NIL contract before he had even uh, a scholarship. Uh, uh, you know, you understand where I'm going. I mean, yeah. I really think oh, yeah. that's an outlier as we speak now. But uh, <clears throat> do you worry? I don't know if worry is the, is yeah. the right yeah. word. Are you concerned about where college football, this whole circus is headed? No, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm right there, too. I think I – Think we're like minded on that because uh, I, I what I love about college football is that uh, you go to a school, you are 
a Buckeye for the rest of, you know, the, traditionally yeah. you are a Buckeye the rest of your life. You often will live in that community. You often find who you marry. Uh, you you'll build your lifelong bonds in that that community. I mean, that's that's what that's what I've always loved about uh, college football because you were known, you know, even, you know, Bo Jackson. Yes, he was this great football, a great uh, professional baseball player and, and, and NFL guy, but he is Auburn. I mean, you you know, Herschel Walker. He is Georgia. I mean, you go down the list of all those types of those types of situations, and and that's what I, me personally, have always loved uh, about college football, but. Yeah, we, we are seeing some of that erode away because of the world that we're in now. And I, I get the counter argument. I get that uh, uh, because coaches can move here and there uh, at free will, essentially, uh, that uh, yeah. the kids do want that opportunity to get that one uh, immediate transfer opt out. But then also you throw in the whole NIL angle uh, and overbuilding some of these these pro, these these players before they've even played a down of uh, uh, of a college well I, I get that side of things and it's it it, it makes for interesting it's going to make for an interesting uh, discussion on, on, on what happens in, in, in the future because uh, it's it's not changing and maybe we will get some better right better regulation and I think that's maybe what the NCAA, you know not maybe that's what the NCAA is crying out for it's what a lot of the uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in Big 12 territory and, you know, down, I'm a, I'm a K-State grad. I went to school K-State. I got right on the street from KU in Missouri. And uh, they can't compete from an NIL standpoint with the Texases, the Oklahomas, the Ohio State. So uh, this uh, supposed level playing field that we were supposed to uh, somewhat have in college football, it's, it's not there. So uh, long story short is that it's, 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 it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird time we're in. Yeah. Well, you know, and to you just named off the name, the rich get richer in this situation. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that you're never going to change blue bloods. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, royalty is royalty and it's been earned for a reason, you know, for all kinds of reasons. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Uh, uh, I don't want to keep you long. Uh, I know you got phone calls to make, even though there's fewer, uh, fewer guys to check up on now, but they're still key. But uh you know, everybody keeps saying the early signing day in December. That's become the signing day. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is the late signing day, I think, is a better way of putting it now. Uh, I've been saying that ever since the early signing day came because you knew, like I said, the blue bloods, the powers that be, mm-hmm. were going to mm-hmm. get on that early signing period, get things done, get the hay in the barn, even before they went to their bowl games or their college football yep. playoffs and stuff. But uh, uh, who was the name here? Because, you know, this is sort of a timeless uh, little uh, podcast we do. I don't want to get into like breaking news type aspect, but who was a holdout name for the second, uh, for the late signing period that you think is going to make waves uh, in college football? That that you're you're still what I'm saying. The big what was yeah. the biggest name still yeah. waiting to sign on on Wednesday of this week? Well, there were there were two guys uh, that really stood out: uh, Harold Perkins, the five star linebacker yeah. down in the Houston Houston area, yeah. was. He did it. This was funny. He he committed to Texas A and M at the All America game, All America uh, Under Armour game, uh, where it was a big deal. But then, oh yeah, I'm going to take other official visits. So yeah. He 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 did that, and and he held true. I mean, and he did take official visits to Florida and to LSU, and LSU was trending with him right now as of January February January 31st. It uh, uh, we'll we'll see what happens with him on on, on Wednesday. And then Shamar Stewart, the five-star defensive lineman from Opelika, Florida, uh, he is another big timer that was trending to Texas A&M. Didn't commit, uh, unlike Harold Perkins. Uh, Harold Perkins committed, then decommitted, uh, but uh, Shamar did not commit, and he waited things out. He was at Miami last weekend. A lot of thought that uh, Mario Cristobal was going to lock that one up here on Wednesday. So, so yeah, I mean that that's what's kind of fun that. Uh, uh, I, I like to call it signing day two. Uh, signing day two, we're we're going to see. There's a fewer amount of guys, but there are some big names out there still, and that's what makes uh, this uh, uh, drama even bigger somewhat because there's just so fewer guys to focus on, but the ones to focus on are are pretty key guys. Yeah, you know, you just touched on a name though that uh, uh, just it just just intrigued me that in my lifetime I have seen now. A coach go from Oregon to Miami, a coach yeah. go from Oklahoma to USC, a coach go from Notre Dame to LSU. 
head coaches, and you're just going, what in the hell yeah. is going? I mean, yeah. it, it, it that's it, seriously, that's nuts, isn't it, Jeremy? I mean, because usually you build a brand and you, yep. you just keep stacking on that. Well, the old days. I mean, yep. I'm not even sure yep. what the old days were all about when you think <laughs> about it. You keep thinking about Woody Hayes and Bear Bryant, these guys staying in Joe Paterno staying forever, you know, yeah. five or yeah. six decades. But to those guys, two and three and four decades, they're a royal right on down the line. And oh, yeah. uh, do, do you think that do you think we're going to be dealing with that down the road as much as anything else? And but number two, like you said, this uh, late signing period, uh, it allowed Mario Cristobal to make up some ground a little yeah. bit, right? I mean, well, well, yeah, we'll start with example, the latter. Lincoln for, Riley, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, fortunately for for Mario, uh, there was enough of the some of those South Florida guys that stayed on the board. Now, well, he's got to yeah. still close them all. We'll see if he can do that here down the stretch. I think he will, and I think uh, they'll. Be a class that potentially could climb up into top 10 consideration. They're uh, not in the top 10 right now, but they're enough on their board that they could do that. Then uh, I don't know. I don't know if this was one of those just weird years where uh, this is an outlier, uh, where I mean, just, just what, what type of year do we see so many of these jobs come open at, yeah. at you know, blue blood programs or top, top level programs. I just don't know if we're going to see that again, but uh that's why we do have that uh, the, the ability to transfer because of the things that we saw like this. This silly season was the silliest of them all, and that's in, in the thankfully the NCAA uh, thought well enough in advance to put the, the transfer portal uh, part into the, the equation to give these kids an opportunity because uh, you you saw so many kids that were uh, at Oklahoma, for example, where they they said Lincoln Riley told them that uh, he was going to be there forever. Yeah. And this is his, and then they left, and now then now now they they've decided to go elsewhere. And you know, Brent Venables did a good job of keeping a lot of those guys at home, but they did lose a a big portion of their playmaking roster. So, uh, I, I I still don't know. I don't know if this is just one of those weird weird years where every all the stars aligned and we had mass chaos, or if this is going to be. Uh, the, the new norm. I, I think it's going to probably be some, somewhere in the middle. I can hedge my bets here. So, so somewhere in the middle where, uh, yeah, there's going to be some big jobs come open and we're going to see transfers all over the place. But I just don't know if we're going to see the, the USC's, the Oklahoma's, the LSU's, the Notre Dame's, uh, the Miami's, the Oregon's of the world like what we saw this year. Yeah. Crazy though. By the way, maybe Lincoln Riley, maybe Lincoln Riley, so I'm going to be here forever and or a day. <laughs> Maybe that's what he told him. <laughs> you know, that little, you always got to watch the semantics there. Yeah. Hey, real quick, uh, uh, well, I'm not hitting you sideways because I told you what I, uh, earlier what I wanted to ask you about, but uh, um, how's the Ohio State staff, this revamped Ohio State staff, uh, what from your, you're looking at it from uh, 30,000 feet, is the way yeah. I like to, I like to yeah. put it. Uh, how is it done, do you think? I mean, uh, Jim Knowles, for example, being hired as a defensive coordinator, have you noticed any impact out there? Uh, uh, on the recruiting trail or buzz or whatever you want to call it. I mean, obviously, Ryan yeah. Day understood he had a problem yeah. on defense and had to fix it. Is there a sense out there that <clears throat> that has happened? Go ahead. But I think the, the point, you made the Ryan Day point. As long as Ryan Day is there and is actively involved in the recruiting process, he is. I mean, there, there's few head coaches that are actively involved in the, the recruiting process as Ryan Day. So as long as Ryan Day is there at Ohio State, me personally, from again from the thirty thousand foot view, I'm not overly concerned about how the Buckeyes will do on the recruiting show. Yes, there's going to be people that uh, uh, some some kids here and there that are concerned about the coordinator this or uh, my position coach that. But yeah. uh, uh, the, the the man, as long as the man's there uh, in, in 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 selling the program like like to do like they like he does and all the wonderful positives that Ohio State brings to the table. But the Buckeyes are going to be fine. I mean, yes, it, uh, uh, it maybe might have cost them one five-star guy here or uh, they missed out on, you know, Wampa or, you know, a couple of guys here and there down the stretch. But he's, he's, he's one of the best head coaches when it comes to recruiting. And as long as that's there, I just, I just have a hard time seeing that momentum changing. What, what, why do you say that? Why do you why do you say that about him being one of the best head coaches? I mean, what what stands out about him in your mind? From like I said, watching him from afar, oh, just the, the investment in the process. I mean, so few head coaches are there, lock stop every single step in the process. I mean, yeah. you know, whether from a 
from an initial conversation with a recruit and his family to, yes, I'm going to sign off on this offer to remaining in communication with them and trading text messages, Zooming with them, FaceTiming with them, DMing with them. Yeah. Uh, it's just so it, there is a some kind of some head coaches don't come in the door until right at the end and they're there to seal the deal. And it works for a lot of programs. But at Ohio State, Ryan Day is one of those guys that's there every step of the process and recruits in their recruits, and especially their families. You know, we're, we're mom and dad and, and, and aunt, uncle and grandma. Uh, grandma can know that uh, uh, I've built a relationship with, uh, with, with him and the high school coaches too. I mean, who are the gatekeepers to this whole process? I mean, they know that uh, they can give uh, Ryan Day a, a, a call or text him and uh, he's going to be uh, quickly back with them. That's, that's rare. And yeah. that rareness is something that's really propels Ohio State on the recruiting trail. Hey, real quickly, uh, uh, Caleb Williams is is that is it is that interesting to you uh, that this guy won the quarterback job over Spencer Rattler? Spencer Rattler hits the transfer portal, goes to South Carolina. As you and I talk, I don't think Caleb Williams is announced where he's going yet. Am, 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 am I right? Yeah, as of now, as of, yeah, as of Monday yeah. morning. So. I mean, we're talking about Oklahoma, which lost its head coach. And yep. then there were rumors that uh, Caleb Williams is seriously considering Wisconsin, you know, uh, because of their hiring of Bobby Ingram. And uh, everybody goes, Wisconsin. And I go, well, you know, uh, uh, if you look back a few years, you know, you'll see where they got this kid out of North Carolina State. Yeah. Who yeah. North Carolina State yeah. no longer needed or wanted. Now, they, you know, kids won a Super Bowl since then. You know what I'm talking about. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is, is that as interesting is any guy, anybody who's entered the portal this year, a standing starting quarterback who uh, was coddled, or let's uh, coddled may not be the right word, but was actively recruit, recruited by his new coach, Brent Venables, when he took over, and yet he stepped into the portal anyway. I mean, yeah. is that a sign of the times, Jeremy? What, what are we yeah. talking about here? I, I think, especially at the quarterback position, yes, I think it is a, a sign of the times uh, where we will see guys that may be. To have the co- either the coaching change or don't win the starting job, they're they're going to go look for greener greener pastures. But uh, Caleb is one of those. You know, he's maybe a unicorn in, the, in in this process, so to speak, because he yeah. was the number one recruit in the country. He is a guy that stepped onto the field as a, a true freshman at arguably one of the top you know ten programs in the country. Not arguably, they this Oklahoma yeah, is a top are. ten program. Yeah. Uh, and did it in some of the, the biggest games for the Sooners this season and, 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 and did it well. So the, the proof is there. I mean, we, we, you could see that the, the, this kid is everything that he is advertised to. Uh, you know, going back to what we talked about earlier, dude, does the, the old school Jeremy Crabtree that loves uh, college football for, for what it is and was like that? No, but on the, on the flip side, too, I also kind of understand where – he is coming from where the coach that recruited him isn't there anymore. The, 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 the quarterback coach, everybody, the support staff, it's not, it's not the same Oklahoma as yeah. what he made that decision originally to go to. So I, I, I understand the decision to look around, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a new, it's a new world. And that's part of uh, it's part of the, the recruiting process. Now, you know, great example, stay in, stay local in the big 10 there. Uh, Scott Frost at, 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 at Nebraska. He was getting hammered, hammered by everybody. You know, media folks like me were hammering him for his lackluster uh, recruiting classes this year. And he openly was telling people, I am saving scholarships for the transfer portal. Signed, I think, what, uh, 12, 12, maybe 13 guys on yeah. signing day and saved the rest of those scholarships for the transfer portal. And you can make an argument that Nebraska uh, did as well as anybody out there. Uh, signing, uh, not signing, but getting kids to come up as part of the transfer portal, including two quarterbacks, uh, Casey Thompson from Texas. They're going to, and yeah. suddenly, much like it we saw at Michigan State a Cup and with Mel Tucker, we're seeing it at Nebraska now where their entire roster is transformed because of the recruiting, uh, because of the transfer portal. So it's a new <laughs> wrinkle to the world of re- re- recruiting. And uh, that that's something I think we're going to see more and more where some schools are just going to, Stay, hold back five, 10 scholarships and see what we can do with the transfer portal. But uh, it's a, it's a risk. It's a risk. I mean, because if you, 
go all in on these uh, these transfers and they bust. Uh, you know, as as University of Kansas and Charlie Weiss about uh, how uh, recruiting transfers and JUCO players uh, can can blow your program up and set it back for uh, 15 years because that is a, a risky risky thing because you want to continue to build those high school kids and get them as part of your program. Yeah, like you said though about Caleb Williams, I mean, it's like he went to this, he moved in with this one house and his family, yeah. and suddenly yeah. that's the only thing that's still standing is the house. The family has all moved out, and there's a new family moved in, and you yeah. know, <laughs> but yeah. but then the flip side, I mean, the loyalty aspect of everything is kind of like out the window now, right? I mean, I'm I'm yeah. not blaming anybody for trying to to better themselves, but that's what's gone out the window with this, right? Yeah. Oh no, that that's yeah. that's uh, that's the. That's what I loved about college, the college athletics, and especially college football. That yeah. you were, you know, I you 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 went to school, you were that for the rest of your your, your life, and that that's certainly yeah. changed. And uh, I think we're just going to have to get used to it. Yeah, Russell Wilson, uh, you know, uh, Joe Burrow, there are all kinds of examples where it went really good. Jalen Hurts, yeah. even really at Oklahoma yeah. when he moved from, yeah. from Alabama, uh, went went pretty well for him in there. Hey, last thing, uh, who who. Who in this Ohio State class, in your opinion, other than Devin Brown, uh, has piqued your interest that you're going to keep an eye on uh, uh, this coming Man, season, whether he can make an impact? I always, you know, people want college football players. Yeah. To, yeah. To, I mean, it's not like basketball where a guy can come off. Greg oh, yeah. can yeah. seven foot can come off of Lawrence Central or wherever and show up and dominate. I mean, football's a totally different deal. But who, who have you got your eye on that could pop? I, I always tell my basketball friends who cover recruiting that they've got it easy. Because, yeah. Uh, that they only get one, one or two guys and the entire program is transferred, transformed. Yeah. So but football recruiting is much different. I mean, you can you know, transform your program with a, with a, a Caleb Williams type of quarterback, but uh, uh, one guy, and I know Berm is high, a high on this guy also. And I, and we, we saw it down at the all America game and uh, all America bowl down San Antonio, but Katie Curry, uh, the defensive lineman from Indiana. The guy just has an outstanding, outstanding motor. It the switch never is off with him. And and yeah. yes, he's not the the you know he's six foot two and a half. He's two hundred forty pounds. He's not going to win. He's he's not going to be the guy you want to get off the bus first if you're uh, Ohio State. He's going to be somebody though that wins with high effort, wins with uh, football IQ that. Uh, uh, coach, if you ask me to run through a brick wall, I'm going to run through six of them uh, and do it really well. I mean, he 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 had a great week down there and and, and deserved the bump that he got in in everybody's rankings from an industry standpoint. He definitely saw a nice bump. Uh, I really like him and 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 just kind of again we're talking about checking boxes early on. He checks all the boxes as to what you want from an Ohio State. Buckeye defensive lineman. Yeah, I asked I asked Ryan Day at the at the regular signing day, you know, a press conference. I said, does he have that like that mean streak in him? You know, that nasty streak. And uh, yeah, because you've got to have that, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can be the biggest, baddest looking yeah. guy, but are you really nasty? You know, when it comes down to doing whatever it takes. And he said, yeah, they've noticed that in him. And <laughs> you guys know have noticed the same thing, right? Those one on one drills. Yeah, <laughs> he's taking no prisoners. Well, and I love that. He continued to do reps. I mean, that, that yeah. so much about the the All American yeah. game is is uh, All American Bowl practices, both in San Antonio, and Orlando, or seeing how much a kid wants to compete. Because yeah, we, we, you notice that as a, as, as as somebody covered in a, an evaluator, you notice that. Uh, well, why is the number one whatever in the back of the line and only taking two reps in the last twenty minutes versus a guy like Caden Curry who would cut people. I mean, he, he seriously, he cut people in line to, to get additional reps. So I love that. And, and I know that uh, the, the coaching staff at Ohio State is going to love that too, because that's the type of, you know, you can, you can have all the, all the physical attributes, but you got to have the one too. Yeah. I was going to say, man, in the last, in, in, in these last two classes, they've gotten Jack Sawyer, they've gotten JT yeah. Tui Molowau. I mean, Tyleek Williams is totally under, I mean, that guy, boy, he is a gap attacking dude mm -hmm. and uh you know Caden Curry I mean you know the, 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 like you like we said earlier the rich seem to get richer in this whole deal no matter what's going on hey Jeremy Crabtree man I appreciate you coming on with me man you and I oh, have talked a million times through the years and stuff first time I've had you on but man you do great work you always have and you know I knew when they were looking for quality at on three you're going to be one of the guys they'd probably be looking at uh, you like being back in the swing though don't you 
I do. I do. I, I missed it. And I, I love that. I, I loved, uh, I, I had a great opportunity to work four years at, uh, at, at the local ABC affiliate here in Kansas City. It was great four years. I uh, got to cover two Super Bowls and, 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 uh, uh, and, and three AFC championship games. Didn't get to cover the fourth one here. Uh, don't get to cover the Super Bowl here coming up. Sorry, uh, uh, Chiefs fans. Uh, but uh, no, I, I, I loved it. But I, my, my heart and soul, my career was covering college football and college football recruiting. And I, I go way back. I mean, I, I'm one of those, uh, as we kind of talk about here, I, I was one of those original guys at the at rivals.com. Yeah. Bobby Burton and I were employee number one and number two, and, and we've done it all. And I love that we've seen uh, this industry grow to where it is. And uh, when they, 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 then Shannon and Bobby came back and said, uh, Hey, we, we want you to be a part of this uh, new venture. It was a, uh, it, it, it took me maybe 30 seconds to say yes. And, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately, my friend, my, my friends at the KBC uh, let me let me come on board a little earlier than what we thought. And uh, uh, we're, we're, we're rocking and rolling and I uh, can't wait to see what the, the future holds. And a lot of it's because of we, we're building great relationships with folks like you and, and all the folks at Letterman Row. And, uh, and you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. We're, we're going to do some amazing things on three and just hopefully. Uh, you guys are all in, uh, all on this for this uh, great journey. Hey, by the way, real quick, I got to ask you: Did you ever think we'd see an NIL? What do y'all call that? What's it called? An NIL Evaluate, database yeah. or valuation? <laughs> yeah, is that crazy or what? I mean, it's, and it's, it's, it's crazy, accurate, but, it, it, but yeah, go ahead. You know, it's crazy, but it makes complete sense that you, oh, you yeah. have to have you have to have it, and and and, and that's what I love about uh, working at a at a company like On Three and with a, a visionary like Shane and Terry who. Uh, has the fourth right to think of things like this. I mean, there are some really cool things that, I mean, we've, the, what you see now on, uh, on three from a database standpoint and from a tool standpoint is, is just the tip of the iceberg yeah. uh, from, from an idea standpoint. And, and I, and I love being part of a company that is forward thinking from a technology standpoint, from a, a content standpoint, from a, a to, especially a tools standpoint that, uh, you know, Hey, we're, we're, we're not afraid to show you where we are, different in rankings compared to everybody else. And uh, we want to become that the one-stop spot for uh, college football fans to, and college basketball fans too, to get all of their information, but then also digest and kind of comprehend what is going on in, in the recruiting world. And as we've talked about a lot here, the NIL is a big part of that process. Yeah. Well, by the way, I'll let you go, but I mean, I always looked at you, uh, Jeremy Crabtree, whatever you put, whatever you put pen to <coughs> ink or, uh, digital to a screen as being a gospel, much like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Appreciate oh, you, my man. <laughs> well, they, they, thank you for the kind words, Tim. I can't wait to do this again. Yeah. Jeremy Crabtree, like I said, we, he and I go way back. You and him go way back. He really is an admirer of your work. And uh, I want to get into it, you, get into it with you with this. You know, you got to go, you get to go to some of these camps around and stuff. How important now is it in your business, meaning covering recruiting, mm -hmm. To get an eyeball to eyeball uh, moments with these with these athletes, so that they know who you are, and maybe helps you keep your foot in the door. Oh, it's huge. I mean, as I said earlier, I mean, when you have thirty different websites trying to contact a kid on Twitter and or you know trying to DM them a question, if they know who you are, yeah. but it's also to these kids and to their parents, they see that you're willing to put in the work and and that you're willing to invest in their kid by, by being there and getting to know them in person and. A lot of times in my business, especially it's, been, it's sort of been currency with photos and like yeah. how, you know, that's sort of a, a door opener to make sure that kids know who you are and that, because ultimately it's about convincing parents and these prospective student athletes that you are valuable to them as they are to you. And, and that is the nature of every good business. I think when you have a mutual benefits, um, you know, from what I'm providing to them and what they're providing to me and when they know that you're willing to go across the country and see them and go down to Miami and see them or go to Phoenix or go to uh, San Antonio, it definitely, it definitely makes a big difference. Uh, let's peek behind the curtain here a little bit and stuff uh, about, about that though. I mean, is it, how much of your day is consumed by making phone calls or DMs? Is it more DMs now and uh, text messaging? Uh, you know, just what is it that gives, keeps you in that, what, what I'd call that, uh, that closer contact with these guys, well, especially, the higher end guys, you know, because they're getting it from everybody. Yeah, you I don't 
I try super hard to not be overbearing. And so my way, generally speaking, is let me know when you can talk. Yeah. And, and I don't like to have phone calls with 15 year olds and 16 year olds. I think that's a bizarre part of the business. I understand it for efficiency sake, sometimes it's more important to do that as opposed to trade a series of text messages through a day. But I like to work ahead and work smarter, not harder. So yeah. um, if I can talk to a kid in a, in a series of texts or, or direct messages, over the course of a couple hours, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, the story writes the same, and I'm establishing again the idea that I'm going to do it the, on their terms. I think is important because yeah, I'm not the important one in the story, uh, and I think that sometimes that gets conflated for people who believe that having recruiting information or inside scoop on kids is somehow about them as opposed to helping promote. Yeah, a, a, a player or yeah. his family. <laughs> yeah, I know um, exactly what you mean. And so to me, that's really become sort of the way I, I feel like I have to do it that way. I don't ever want to be the, the reason that someone, you know, says, oh, man, I can't stand talking to the media. Oh, I, I can't answer the phone anymore. This person's called me 30 times. Um, you know, I, and I, I try really, really hard to make sure that these players and their families know that this process is theirs. I'm just a vehicle to help tell their story. Yeah. And and ultimately, that's that's how it, I can't do it any other way. Let me ask you, Ev, do you think, though, the attention that these guys get now? I mean, like I, like I told Jeremy, man, uh, Tom Lemming used to dictate his top 100 yeah. in the nation to me over the phone from yeah. Chicago, Chicago area. I remember the I mean, one that you had to call the 900 numbers to get yeah. uh, recruiting information. Well, 900 was a big, that was a big moneymaker yeah. for a lot of those guys. And uh, uh, as if, if things start, started burgeoning. But uh, do you think the attention these guys get, though, is leading in some form or fashion, leading to this ridiculous influx into the transfer portal now? I yeah, mean, of, of course, of guys expecting to play because they've heard such great things about themselves for three years. I mean, where, where do you think that kind of fits in this mix? I don't even think it's because of the sense of like importance that they're that they're given by people in my position a lot of times. Yeah. I think a lot of times it's because there are people who have been using those kids to prop themselves up for so long, whether it's seven on seven coaches, whether it's high school coaches, whether it's other trainers who are tied in with those kids and stay in their ear and, and, and say, Hey, you know what? You're not playing here. So let me call uh, Joe Schmo at, at, you know, Texas, A, B, and C. And I, they, they'll take you and I can, it, it helps me if I can help them. And yeah. I think that there's so much, I mean, urban Meyer used to call it the third uncles in right. the world. And, <laughs> you know, we've got to a point because the recruiting business is so big that there's not just third uncles anymore. There's fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh uncles. And you have to figure out exactly which people have the best interest of, of the player and, and the family part. And a lot of times that best interest is actually more for themselves as opposed to the player. And so it, it does create this kind of really ugly middle ground where I don't know that the kids are getting advice that's in their best interest as opposed to being in someone else's yeah. interest. That, that's difficult to wade through, and it's happening more and more, and the transfer portal just makes it that much easier because these kids can just say, hey, well, my my seven-on-seven seven coach told me, you know, you're looking for a, a corner, and I can play here. So and that's that, that's the way it's working. You know what impressed me about Devin Brown? I had him, You talked to him. I had him on my podcast. Is that the quarterback they signed, the number one recruit in the country, as it turns yep. out. I had Jeremy Crabtree explain that whole process, I, how you go from here to number one in the final analysis, and – it is you got, they got you guys got more opportunities to see him, yeah. you know, and especially in the All America game uh, and lead up to it. But uh, Devin Brown, you know, he basically said he's not even that interested in developing NILs right now or the stuff. He wants to compete. He wants to CJ Barnett walking by. He wants to compete for uh, for the starting quarterback job at Ohio State. Yeah. That's what's primarily on his mind. Uh, is it refreshing to run into some guys like that on occasion? I think most of these guys are coming to Ohio State or like that, right? It is. I mean, but most of them are that way, yeah. and that's by design. That's not – Well, we that, just remember the last big-time quarterback sure, Ohio State signed. Sure, it's not ironic. It's not a, oh, that's a coincidence. Glad that worked out that way. That is by design. Yeah. Um, I've heard – I mean, apropos of nothing, I've heard glowing reviews about Devin Brown from yeah. folks uh, close to the program that have – I'm not going to say I've heard the words Joe Burrow, but I might have heard the words Joe Burrow. He reminds me of him, though, man. I'm telling um, you. So, I mean – take it for what it's worth but yeah, yeah it, it, it's I think that there's nothing wrong with kids who are in this position and, and they've worked their butts off to get here 
Like this is the new era. Name, image, and likeness is part of football. So that is going to be something we have to deal with. But I think that like everything else, there has to be balance. And if your priority is name, image, and likeness, you're going to fail yeah. uh, on the football field, yeah. especially at a place like Ohio State. If you're here and your first priority is not development and getting better at the game, then you're not going to last here long enough to take advantage of the NIL. Yeah. So uh, there is going to have to be balance, but, and you will see it. I mean, there's going to be a handful of kids that do it, that go backwards and do it the wrong way and do it from the, uh, you know, the inside out or, or however outside in. I don't know which direction it is. That's not really important. It doesn't matter. It's just going crossways. What is important is that balance is key in everything. Yeah. And, and the Buckeyes and everyone else are going to have to navigate this world where it's like, hey, at what point of, this, of the year do you focus on this? And yeah. what part of the year do you focus on your craft? And You know, Austin Ward is usually my co-pilot. You know, my usual co-pilot knows which buttons to push. Uh, we talked about this a few times. Uh, the interesting thing, though, about being a quarterback uh, candidate at Ohio State, them pursuing you, and then you just look at the last several. Mm -hmm. if, if you ever get to fly the plane, you're going you're gonna to have a chance to, to go for record territory. You're going to have a chance to run a ridiculous offense. Well, the last four quarterbacks have been Heisman Trophy finalists. Bingo. That's a pretty good place That's to start. That's the point. You know? Is it amazing what – Ryan Day and his staff. I mean, obviously started with Urban Meyer, but what they built here from an attraction standpoint, kind of like Wally World. I mean, it's it's always been this way at Ohio State. That's the thing. Nah, I mean, I it's just, for it's so much. It's so well. It's certainly not just for quarterbacks, but it, I'm talking it, about for quarterbacks. It, it's it's hard not to be excited if you're a quarterback looking at this offense and what yeah. they do. Uh, That's what I'm talking in about. this building. It's I've watched football a long time. You have. I don't. I've never seen a, an offense that consistently has receivers as wide open as these guys are. Maybe that's a testament to Gary Wilson and Chris Olave and Jackson Smith and Jigba and every, you know, but it, it was also Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin and Johnny Dixon and yes. KJ Hill. So it's not like you can only say it's, oh, you got great, you know, first round talents. Um, this is a, a really good offense. And certainly now it's, Urban used to talk all the time about theory over testimony, right? Yes. Or, or testimony. Testimony over theory. Over theory. And now you have both. Um, and, and that's how you that's how you keep growing. I mean, that's why the next one will also be there. You know, that's why it's going to go. The next quarterback in the twenty three class, twenty four class, will be just as highly rated and have just as as great an opportunity to to win it out. Last thing, uh, I asked you this back in December. But I'm going to ask it a new way. Uh, give me two or three guys from this from this signing class for Ohio State twenty twenty two, and you can name Devin Brown if you want to, but. I think he's going to have to wait at least a year to yeah. do his thing. Who has the best chance to make just an immediate impact? And uh, I think I know where you're going to go with at least one of them. I may be wrong, but go ahead. Well, I mean, I, I, it, it's such a unique year because this roster was so young to begin with. It wasn't a situation where you have guys that have to come in and contribute right away. Um, I think that you'll see some real opportunity for guys like C.J. Hicks to play uh, special teams and making impacts on these styles the same way. Yeah. Um, I think, so I think Bennett Christian, who a tight end, who's one of the, you know, the tight end is not a, a glory position, especially in the Ohio state offense, but at six, six, 245, 250 pounds as a true freshman, early enroll guy at a position that there's really not true tight ends playing. I yeah. think he has an opportunity to really do some stuff. Isn't that amazing? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't really have true tight ends playing the position. So it's interesting. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Caden Curry. I don't know if he's going to make a huge impact because the defensive line is so loaded. Um, so there, there's, it's going to be a little bit harder for him. I think a guy who's going to surprise some people is Kai Stokes wow. at safety, who yeah. um, wow. because he's that long free safety type that you really, that they want back there. And with Josh Proctor coming back from injury and Lathan Ransom's injury, I think Kai, as an early enrollee, again, has an opportunity to kind of surprise some people. Yeah. And then I think Keon Grays will be the, the wide receiver that, you know, we're, we're, we obviously know what you have with Jackson Smith and Jigba and Julian Fleming and um, Marvin Harrison and Emeka Abuka and even Jaden Ballard. But I think Keon is that, that kind of just under the radar guy. He's such a complete player yeah. that I think he'll surprise some people. Uh, isn't it amazing? We watched the football playoffs over the weekend, the two championship games. Ohio State has had some pretty good defensive players <laughs> just recent years. Just turn on the uh, turn on the television. And uh, do do you think Jim Knowles will enhance that attraction? I mean, what do what do you think about? I mean, without going into detail about this defense, because we'll, we'll do that as the spring goes on, et cetera. But do you think there's a chance to enhance that attraction for big time defensive candidates? Yeah, I mean, this is a 
this is a player's defense, right? And so that yes. is what it comes down to. When I talk to recruits now, all I hear about is Chase Young, Jeff Okuda. So yeah. somebody else has to be that guy, right? Somebody, th this, they have to have new players emerge into that role. I think this defense allows for some guys to become stars. And I think the Jack Sawyers of the world are that type that I think could really step into that, that Leo role and do something special. So yeah, I think it can enhance it, but I also think it's a situation where it's Ohio State. So as long as they go out there and don't put the worst historical defense in the history of the program on the field, yeah, people are going to be like, okay, fine, I can go there and I can win the Big Ten and compete for a national championship. So uh, I, I don't know that it's going to be an immediate thing um, because you need to see consistency, but I think what people are looking for is just aggression, right? And, and to, to your point about the Bengal, the Buckeyes in the, in the you know, playoffs, playoffs four of the six captains in the Super Bowl are former Ohio State Buckeyes. And yeah. so when you start to look at it from that perspective, and Urban Meyer takes a lot of heat from a lot of people, his whole thing here was creating a culture of leadership and accountability for these people. Maybe he didn't always do it himself, but it seems to have worked for the guys that he helped get through these doors. And yes. Ryan Day certainly enhanced that and cultivated it. And that's why kids come to Ohio State. It's not because of stats. It's not because the defense is going to get better in their gym goals, and it will. It will get better. Um, but ultimately it's about the, the culture that they've created has withstood so much change over the last hundred years. The Ohio State has still never had that swoon that Alabama had, that Texas has had, that Michigan had. Yeah, they've had blips. Yeah, they, they've swoons. had a one-year right. trip. You're right. They haven't had that that swoon. Yeah. And I, I don't think they're that is coming anytime soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I enjoy it when Jeremy Birmingham steps into the co-pilot seat. Uh, you know, he had a little I'm not sure he knows exactly where all the uh, uh, controls are no, for the autopilot. No, I just fly blind. But Jeremy Birmingham, thank you for joining the Tim A podcast again, my man. No and, problem. Uh, until next week, we'll see you then. <laughs>